Like you saw at the beginning of the video, today we're going to be taking a look at how to do some claw simulation with some visual effects. Now, I do want to say this is going to be a more faster paced tutorial today. However, if you do want some slow paced learning, I actually have two course that go over just that one about visual effects advertising and then one more specifically catered from beginner to pro with blender visual effects. And so those two will be down in the description below if you are interested. Also, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon members. Without your support, I don't know if I could provide free content here on YouTube, so I really do appreciate it. Uh, one of the perks is that you will get all of the files I use in all of my videos. And so definitely go ahead and check that down below if you do want to follow along uh, specifically with this video with all my files. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So uh, first of all, I do want to go ahead and model out the building inside of Blender. That's the uh, kind of first step in this type of sim uh, simulation process, just because we do want some interactions there. So let's, uh, I'm going to shift A, we'll add a mesh cube right there. And uh, now I will say I went ahead and already tra uh, camera tracked my actual footage. You can see that's down here. I have plenty of camera tracking tutorials on my channel. And so definitely go ahead and make sure to follow along there if you do want to uh, know my tr uh, camera tracking process. So let's go ahead and I'll scale this up. Now I did go ahead and place the edge of my building onto that crack right there in the camera tracking. So that is good. We can go ahead and I'll go into edit mode and I'll just kind of move this up. I will say this is a little bit finicky uh, just because it is a kind of tripod shot. There's actually a lot of stuff we can do in order to kind of cheat some things here and there. Uh, but, you know, I am not the greatest modeler. And so there's probably a lot of rules that I am breaking again for this shot specifically. We don't need to be too accurate there. So let's just GZ move that down. And I do want to move this edge down here just to align on the X right there. Uh, so we basically just have this line of our thing to find now. I do want to go ahead and define this corner piece right here. So control R just going to move that over here. So now uh, that is looking pretty good and actually matches pretty well. I think uh, we lose it a little bit down here. So I can actually just uh, move that like there. And so now that line is pretty perfect. And so that is uh, that side. Let's go ahead and E to extrude this side out. Let's do the exact same process. That side is good up there. Let's go ahead and bring this uh, in the Y out here, something like that. And then also we do need to align this side as well. So I might select this edge. I'll bring that down a little bit here. GX move that over here. And then finally, we'll bring the kind of bottom section down here as well. This is what I'm talking about by it not technically being super accurate, you know, in terms of the camera tracking and modeling, but it's getting us 90% of the way there. You can see already we're building that side out. That is uh, looking good. Let's go ahead and get this side uh, dialed in as well. So I'm just going to select both of these sides here. Just going to move them on the Y right there. So it's a uh, line there. And then we can also do the same to the bottom. So G Y just move that to the bottom section. Just so this uh, side of our building is aligned as well there. Uh, so that is looking good for that section. Let's go ahead and go up to the next level dealing with this uh, kind of section a uh, bit up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the face here and we'll hit I to in, uh, insert that or inset that. Uh, right there, I'm basically just lining this corner. And then I do want to go ahead and move this ever so slightly in, like right there. So that looks much better. This uh, building is very complicated. For some reason, it's, uh, you know, not the most uh, natural shape of the building. So we'll just uh, double tab Z to move that up here. I hit E to extrude, by the way. And so that looks pretty good. Uh, we do need to mess around with all of our lines right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get this edge. Oh, I move that on the Y. So just move that over here. And then this top vertice, I'll move on the Y as well, just to align that a little bit better. Same thing over here. Let's align the bottom. So right around there. And then we'll take this top vert vertice and uh, on the Y, just right there. Might also do it on the X a little bit. So right there, and we'll move it back on the Y. So like that. And then I'm just going to take this whole face. And I do want to get that very, very corner piece right there. So that's looking good. And then finally, we'll just do this ver vertice over here. And now that is pretty much uh, exactly where I want it. We do need to get this top little uh, crooked piece right here. So let's e extrude that up. Double tab Z again to move it on the Z axis. And let's do some final kind of uh, pinning of the vertices here. So uh, this side, or we'll select this edge and just move that all the way down. And we can move this ver uh, vertice in the back. We'll just move that down as well. Uh, we don't really need to worry about that side too much just because uh, we only see the front of the building. So that looks pretty good and matches pretty well to my scene. Uh, so that is the first part of the building done. I do want to go ahead and add uh, some of these other parts as well. 
And so let's add another mesh cube and I can uh, bring that over here and we'll just bring it up in this section it is uh, behind this building. So roughly around this area is looking good. And I'll just kind of scale that out and up. I basically just want to align it to this corner right there. So that looks good. And then we can go ahead and go into edit editing mode and bring this down here as well. And uh, just while we're at it, we'll bring this vertice right around there. So it just matches that side of the building. And so that looks pretty good. I'm also just going to go ahead and bring uh, this kind of side and uh, we'll just G uh, Y just move it inside of the building there just so it's uh, connected like that. So that looks good. Uh, finally, let's do the final parts of the building. So shift a mesh cube. We'll move this back here and up top. It is kind of behind everything. So I'm going to position it like right here, I think is a good uh, kind of point of view of where it actually would be in the real world. So let's scale it up a little bit more and then uh, SZ, just scale it in the Z direction. And then we want to do the exact same thing that we've been doing. We just want to select the bottom. So that bottom face, we'll just move that down, select this uh, edge vertex. We'll G Y, just move that back a little bit. And then we'll get the top kind of point of view. I want to match this corner. So I'll G Z move that down. So that corner is matching. We need to get the other vertex now. So G X somewhere like that. And then uh, this one as well. So we'll G X move that here. And it looks pretty aligned there. I'm not going to mess around too much with that. And then finally this uh, vertex right here. Again, I'm just lining everything up um, to be the sides, the sides of the building. I know it's technically not accurate, but again, we can cheat it a little bit. So let's E, double tap Z, move that up. And let's get this vertex. Uh, we'll move it here. Or let's uh, move it on the X, actually. And then we'll move this one on the Z until it goes to that corner. This one on the Z until it's basically just touching the other one. And then the one behind uh, doesn't really matter as much, again, because we don't see it on the actual camera. So yeah, so that looks good. And then one final thing we need to do is one last cube. I know we're adding a lot of cubes today. But we need to do that antenna. So we'll just place uh, the cube. The antenna is like right around there, we'll say. And then it does need to be like right here is looking good. Let's just go ahead and get the top kind of scaled out. So I'll just uh, G, Z, move that over here. And then just scale that out a little bit right there. So that looks good. And then uh, actually, it's pretty good at the bottom as well. So we'll just size it up a little bit. And yeah, that's actually pretty decent. I might actually uh, bring this out. We do want to make sure it's as uh, kind of accurate as we can make it because we are going to be using this as a holdout. And so it is going to actually affect our compositing. But that looks pretty good. I don't really care about losing some of the detail of this side uh, over there. So yeah, so that's pretty much modeling out the building. And so it matches pretty well. I'm not going to worry about some of the uh, kind of smaller bits here and there. Uh, but that is the basic gist of everything. Now let's go ahead and add in our cloth simulation. I'm going to shift a we'll add a new plane let's just uh move and position that wherever i want it and i do want it to be uh, kind of in the front of this building here and so we can just position it like right there might do it a little bit over so yeah something like that and then i do want it to be a little bit taller covering the entire building so we'll just uh, move that edge all the way up and then we'll just make it a little bit bigger in the x so something like that uh, so yes yeah, so that is my cloth let's go ahead and make it a cloth so I'll come over here and add a cloth uh, physics. And uh, you can see it's uh, falling down a little bit over here. It is uh, because I actually set up the correct scale of my scene. It is a mass massive cloth simulation. So that's why it's falling so slow. Uh, what I'm actually going to do just for the sake of, uh, you know, viewing this, I'm just going to uh, multiply it by two just so it's a little bit faster and uh, it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye, if you will. I know it's technically not realistic, but again, we're playing around with it and having some fun today. So our cloth doesn't look that great, and that's because we don't have much uh, geometry set to it. And so let's go ahead and add some more geometry. So I'm going to hit A and then uh, subdivide it. We'll subdivide it by like 50 times, I think, is what I ended up sticking with. Uh, something like this. So you can see we have a lot more geometry to work with. And then we do need to set up some more kind of uh, things. Uh, now I do want to go ahead and animate everything. So I'm going to turn the cloth selection off on the viewport. Now let's go ahead and animate. So on frame one, I'm going to hit I to add a keyframe. This is where I want it to be on frame one. And then on frame 200, we'll say I kind of want it to be up and uh, also, uh, you know, further back and then also up uh, in the Z direction. So we'll uh, G and then I'll double tap Y or Z right there. So double tap Z to move it backwards. And then we'll G and Z is just uh, single tap Z to just move it up. And so just so it's out of frame on frame 200. So I again to add another keyframe. 
and then we'll go to 100. I basically want it to uh, go back and then go up. So what I can do is I'll actually G, double tab Z, again, just move it kind of back here. And then uh, G, Z, I'll just move it down a little bit. So it kind of has like an arc to it, if, uh, if that makes sense. So let's hit I, let's play this, just to double check that everything. So it's going through the building, everything is looking good there. And then it goes up at the very end. So that's exactly kind of what I want the effect to be. Uh, let's change the cloth uh, back on so we can see uh, it's still giving us this result. And that's because uh, whenever we're dealing with physics, we actually need to tell it that it's animated. And so specifically for cloth, what we need to do is uh, define a new pen group. So if we come to shape, there's this pen group right here. So that's super, super easy. Let's go into editing mode and we'll select this top uh, thing up here. I'm just holding alt to select that. And then we'll go ahead and just select these two uh, edges on the side there. If we come to vertex group, we want to add a new vertex group and just hit assign here. And then we can finally come back all the way out to our cloth tab. And on our, in our pin group, we can now select that group we just made. And so now if we play it, we should see that the actual cloth simulation works and it's moving and animating however uh, we had it before. So that looks pretty good. It's looking a little bit uh, kind of pixelated right now. And also it doesn't uh, kind of attach to the building. So first thing I want to do is let's add some wind. And so I want to do go to force field, go to wind. And let's just kind of bring this out here, scale this up so I can see it. Uh, I'll just rotate that on the X and then just rotate on the Z. I basically just want it to kind of point up here and maybe I'll double tap X uh, to rotate it down a little bit. Uh, just so it's kind of forcing it down instead of just going straight at the building, if that makes sense. Uh, so strength, I'm going to set that up to 25, I believe, is that um, that's the strength that I wanted that. And so now you can see we're actually having uh, some wind into our actual cloth sim. So that's looking really good. Finally, we do need to add some collision to the objects that we made, the whole reason we made the objects. So I'm going to come over here. We can make a new collision uh, for all of these objects. So collision, collision. And then finally, we do have one more object over here. So collision for that one as well. And so now if we play this, we can see that it's actually interacting with our building. Uh, now it is clipping through a lot. And so we do need to go ahead and uh, set the resolution up a little bit and play around with some different stuff. So first of all, uh, the thing that uh, I don't really like about Blender cloth sims is that they automatically assume that you're working with planar objects. And so that is this single sided thing right here. Uh, for some reason, you know, I don't know the full expl explanation, but if you turn that off, it actually works better if you're dealing with more uh, 3D objects. And so let's select this one, turn single sided off. And then for these other two ones up here, so we'll turn all of this off. And so now we have that. You can see it's going through our uh, kind of building right now. And so it, it again, it's very confusing there because what we actually need to do now is we need to come to the cloth settings. We'll set the quality steps up to two, uh, 20 on both our main kind of sim and also the collisions down here. We need to set this up to 20 as well. And then what I also like to do for this one is let's uh, go ahead and turn on self collision so it collides with itself. But the big one here is turning the distance all the way up to one meter. Basically, all that means is that all, uh, in all of our collisions, it's basically going to have a one meter border around everything, which uh, really helps with kind of uh, selling the collisions for this. And so now uh, with all of that change, we can play it. And now you can see it's act or, uh, acting much more naturally and actually colliding with our buildings without any clipping. And so that's really nice. Uh, so yeah, so this is giving us a pretty cool result. It's still a little pixelated. And so in order to get that out, what I actually found out recently is you can add a subdivision surface modifier with a uh, keyboard shortcut. If you uh, type in uh, control and then hit one, two, three, uh, all the way up to six, you can actually add one in. And so if you hit control and then two, it'll add a subdivision surface modifier at the viewport level of two. And so that's really nice to uh, kind of view over here. Let's go ahead and right click and shade smooth. Just to get out all of that uh, kind of weird shading over there. And so, yeah, so that's pretty much it about the cloth sim. You can see it's looking pretty uh, natural and giving us the movement that we want. Uh, and then at the end, it'll actually go up and, uh, you know, uh, do some cool stuff there. And so, yeah, so we are done with that. Let's go ahead and bake out the sim. So in the physics tab, we'll go to cache. Uh, now, this is where you can play around with the start and end keyframe. If you want the sim to kind of already be started by frame one, you can actually set that start frame to be a negative number. I'm just going to keep it on one just for simplicity's sake, but we can go ahead and hit bake and bake it all the way through. Okay, once your bake has finished, we can actually play this and see uh, it actually go up and everything is looking good. This is one where you want to kind of double check to make sure uh, you're not having any kind of collision issues, uh, any clipping issues or anything like that. Uh, because uh, we are using this building as a mask in compositing. And so we just want to double check everything there. But yeah, that's looking pretty good and giving us the exact kind of result that I wanted. 
Uh, let's kind of make a new in keyframe. And so up here, we'll notice that at frame, we'll say uh, 203 is when the claw sim is fully off screen. And we'll say 203 is our new in keyframe here, just because we don't have to bother rendering out extra blank frames uh, at the end. And so that looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, get everything set up uh, visually to go ahead and render out some different CG passes. So the first thing uh, to do is let's set up some render properties. So render, uh, let's go to cycles and I'm going to set it to GPU compute. Uh, now these are th some things that I like to do. So, uh, you know, uh, do whatever that you want for your scene. This is, uh, you know, for my computer and this, uh, my machine, these are the numbers I'm going to pick. So let's denoise on for the viewport. I'm going to make uh, the noise threshold, uh, multiply that by four, uh, because we are going to be denoising. We can uh, set that number to be higher just so we get a little bit faster of a render. So again, a uh, 0.04 right there. Let's denoise on, uh, but I'm going to change it to optics. This is something I've been playing around with. I know technically it's not the more accurate version. However, optics renders out so, so much more fast on my computer. And so that's what I'm going to be using. Then down here, I'll just do a 512 uh, sample count. So pretty low there, but again, we are denoising. And so it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, so next we need to make sure motion blur is on. We'll go to film and set that to transparent, which is looking good. And now we have uh, all of this set up. We are ready to start dealing with some texturing and also some lighting. So first of all, I want to deal with some lighting. I can come over to my world properties. We'll go set this instead of color. We'll do it to environment texture and then open up a HDRI. Okay, so I went ahead and just went on Polyhaven and found a HDRI that kind of matches our environment over here. So here it is, the evening road right here. I'm just going to open that up. Uh, now, I think technically it's not super accurate to our scene uh, since it's a little bit more direct sunlight. However, I think it uh, uh, adds a lot of dimension to the cloth. And honestly, I think it's within, uh, you know, margin of error uh, for this cloth. And so I, I think it just looks visually more appealing, if that makes sense. Uh, so again, not technically realistic, but more visually appealing. So uh, now that we have that, we can go ahead and uh, I do want to kind of rotate it a little bit. So we'll go to the shader editor up to world. Uh, now you do want to make sure you have the node Wrangler add-on installed. And then with that, we can hold control T at texture coordinate and mapping node. I believe uh, if we just rotate this a little bit, uh, so something like that, we can have a better uh, kind of lighting on this side because I don't like in the original how dark it was over there. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that is looking good. And now we are ready to deal with the actual materials of everything. So first of all, uh, we want a new material for this little thing over here. Now, again, I went ahead and went on Polyhaven and downloaded a cloth material that I liked. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and import in that cloth material. The thing I like about Polyhaven is it actually gives you a blend file. Again, I'm not sponsored by them. I just love using their website and all of the stuff that they offer. And so let's go ahead and go to file append and we can go view that. Okay, so here is the textures uh, that I downloaded from Hollyhaven. Again, link is down in the description for that. Let's go ahead and open up the blend file and I'll go to material and this book pattern right here. We'll just append that into our scene. And then of course, with our object selected over here, we can just add that book material uh, onto our actual cloth. And so that is uh, giving us that result. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna add a value node over here and plug that into the scale. Uh, just because I think uh, if we put it to a seven, it'll be correctly scaled to our scene. Uh, just because before it was kind of, you know, too big for my uh, eyes. And so I just want to, again, to just scale that down a little bit. So that's how you do that. Uh, next thing I want to do is I don't love this kind of green color right here. So I want to try to uh, mess around with that a little bit. So I'm going to add a hue saturation value node. Uh, and then let's play around with the hue. I think I ended up sticking with like a 0.3 for the hue. And then I bumped up the saturation ever so slightly there. And then uh, finally, I wanted it to be a little bit more red. And so I can add in a RGB curves node, just plug that over there. Uh, we'll go to the red channel and just bump up the gamma of the red channel uh, ever so slightly. So yeah, so it's like a maroon slash a darker red type color. Uh, so that looks pretty good. I might also go to the main one and we'll bump the highlights up on everything. And then we'll bring this uh, gamma slider down a little bit because uh, I don't want it to be too pink, uh, if that makes sense. Um, again, we can always mess around with this a little bit more involved in compositing, but we do want to try to get it as close as uh, possible if we can. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and deal with the building texture. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to use the footage texture and uh, paste that onto the building, basically. So in order to do that, uh, let's make a new material. I'll just name this building and we'll add a another image texture in over here. So place that there and let's open up our footage. Okay, so here is my footage, just a PNG sequence. So I'm going to hit A and open those images, place that into the base color. Let's go ahead and turn auto refresh and uh, mirror on. 
Uh, those just help with, uh, you know, um, the viewing of the texture, if that makes sense. And then uh, control T to add a, a texture coordinate mapping and plug it into window. And so now that's exactly what we want. Basically, it's just projecting that texture of our footage onto the object. And then what we can do is I want to turn the roughness all the way up and the specular all the way down or, you know, close uh, to all the way down. And so, yeah, so that just gets out all of the reflections. And so, yeah, so that looks pretty good and uh, exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and uh, kind of start talking about how to render this out as multiple passes. Uh, so first of all, let's organize everything. I actually, uh, if you downloaded my uh, files, you should have a building and a cloth section. We need to place all of these cubes in the building collection. And then our cloth selection just has our main plane and our win object right there. And so what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and enable some filters. I'm going to enable the holdout and the indirect only filter. So you can see on all of the collections, those are now enabled. And what I want to do is I want to do multiple view layers and break them up into different passes. And so that's super easy and simple to do. Let's go ahead and name this one cloth. And then we'll go and make a new view layer and name this one shadow. And so on the shadow view layer, again, I just want a uh, the shadow with a alpha channel for the compositing stage. And so in order to do that, what I can do, let's just go to like a frame like this, just so we can visually see it. Uh, and then I'm going to turn the building to, or sorry, the cloth to be indirect only. So now you can see it's basically indirect, uh, indirectly affecting our scene. And so it's giving us our shadow right there. Let's come to the cloth view layer and let's do the opposite. The building is now going to be indirect only. So now we don't actually have the shadow in this uh, kind of section. So it breaks it out a little bit. One thing I do want to call attention to is you will see we uh, now see behind the actual building. And so that's why uh, we don't actually want to use indirect only here. We want to use the building object that we had made as a mask. And so it'll help us out a ton. Uh, what we want to do is instead of using indirect only, we want to be using a holdout. So now you can see it's doing exactly what we want it to do. Uh, all of these sections that are behind the building are actually being masked out by the building, if that makes sense. Uh, so it just helps us a lot. It's a super tough thing to do uh, in the compositing stage. And so it's just going to save us a lot of time there, uh, especially for this antenna, which would be nearly impossible to kind of uh, rotoscope out and everything. So, yes, yeah, so that is uh, looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, get these things rendered out and go into After Effects. So let's go to compositing. Hit use nodes up here and I need to duplicate this and change this to be our shadow view layer. And then what I like to use in order to render out multiple different uh, kind of passes inside of Blender is the file output node. So what I can do is I'm going to hit in to go to the node panel over here in the properties and we can add another input. And so now we can plug uh, multiple inputs to be rendered out at the same time. And so for this one, I'm going to name this cloth underscore. These are what the uh, actual files are going to be named. And so we do want to make sure we put that underscore there just to separate it from the actual uh, frame number that it's going to give us. So that's looking good. Uh, we can, of course, save it in a new file path. OK, so here it is. Let's hit accept there and then let's go ahead and uh, set all of these settings. Honestly, I'm just going to keep them on the PNG RGBA and then 15 percent compression is totally fine with me. And then we can go ahead and I do want to go uh, do a test render. And so let's come out here. I do want a interesting frame. So we'll do like 108 for me. And let's go ahead and test render this. So render image. Uh, just uh, I'm just checking to make sure everything is actually accurate. Uh, and actually, I can already tell that uh, we didn't make a, a quick mistake here. So let's come back out of here uh, again. This is why I love doing test renders, because we can get out all the mistakes as possible. Uh, we can view this one and you can actually see the building in this one. I don't want to see the building at all. I just want the uh, kind of shadow bits of the building. So uh, let's come out to the layout tab and go into our shadow view layer. We can just see what's going on. Uh, so, yeah, so we basically have all of these different things. Uh, first of all, we don't have the uh, correct material on, on, on all of the other ones. Uh, and then also we don't have it set to be a shadow catcher right now. So we do need to go ahead and fix both of those things. What I can do is I'll just select all of these objects right here uh, and make sure that this is the highlighted yellow one. And so just click on that one as the final one. I believe it's control L is to uh, transfer the materials. So we'll just link materials there. And there you go. Now it all uh, has the same material as our building material down there. So super easy there. Finally, we just need to select all of these ones up here and go into the object properties and uh, hit into visibility. And we'll just change these into shadow catcher. So for that one, we'll do shadow catcher for this one, this one, and then finally this one as well. Uh, so now that's exactly uh, fixing what we had before. Uh, now you can see we actually have transparency back here and we only see the shadow. And so that is exactly what we want. 
Uh, so yeah, so let's do another quick test render. And so let's come out here and do a uh, render image. Okay, so my render finished. Uh, it's giving us a 10.3 uh, uh, per frame, which uh, for 4K is totally fine for my needs. I'm not going to try to optimize it any more than that. Let's uh, come back out here and let's just double check uh, that our shadow pass did update. And so it looks like it's updating there. And so that is uh, pretty much it. We are ready to render this out. We are done with Blender. So let's save the project. Come out to the layout section you always just want to double check that you're in solid view out here if you're actually in rendered view it'll take a little bit extra to render per frame so you always just want to be in solid view and then let's come up here and render the animation okay so once your render has finished you should get a folder that looks like this where we have all of our cloth uh, simulation passes and then also our shadow simulation pass and so we are ready to hop inside of compositing. Now I'm going to be using After Effects today for my compositing. However, you can use whatever compositing program of choice. Uh, if I'm actually working on higher end client stuff, I'll use Nuke uh, for my compositor program. But After Effects is totally capable of what we're going to be doing today. So let's go ahead and import in everything. I'm going to right click and import uh, multiple files right here. And then let's first, uh, we'll get our footage into our scene. You do want to make sure PNG sequence is selected down here and import that in. Then next, we'll get both of our uh, CG render layers. So right here, uh, the first one is cloth. And then we just need to scroll down and find our uh, shadow 01. So right here, shadow 01, we can import that in as well. And we're done there. Uh, so by default, it's uh, rendered in as a 30 frame rate footage. And so we do need to go ahead and change that. We can right click and go to interpret footage, go to main and hit 24 to change the frame per second. Or we can just click up here, uh, control alt G and it'll do the exact same thing. So uh, control alt G again and change this to 24. So yeah, so that is everything there. We do need to go ahead and create a new composition down here with our footage. We'll place the cloth pass on top and then the shadow pass in the end between both of those. Now I'm not gonna be going too involved into the compositing here. Uh, first of all, I do want to make the shadow look a little bit better. So uh, in order to do that, I'm gonna copy and paste my, uh, uh, my original footage and I'm going to use the shadow alpha channel as a track map. So let's go ahead and put the shadow as a track map. All that does again is just use the alpha channel of whatever layer you choose to basically use as a mask. And so with that, you can't see anything yet, but if we go ahead and add a, uh, we'll add a color correction, go down to levels and just play around with the gamma and we just move that down a little bit. Uh, you can now see it's uh, what it's doing. It's actually affecting uh, whatever our mask was for our alpha channel. So that's pretty cool down here. So let's uh, dial this in a little bit more. So I'm really looking at these uh, bits over here. I'll move this one down ever so slightly. Again, this is what we kind of had it as before, uh, but now we can get much more detailed and uh, you know less uniform because that's actually how shadows would be. It will actually take uh, the color information of whatever it's uh, being processed on. And so, yeah, so that is looking good. You can see our shadow is looking much better in my opinion now. Uh, let's deal with this cloth uh, pass up here. So first of all, I do want to add, um, defocus everything. So we'll go to blur, camera lens blur. And I believe with testing, I ended at like a 1.2 uh, was what I kind of tested it as. I kind of just went to one of the starting keyframes and just aligned uh, the kind of focus level of this line down here to uh, some of these bits down here. And so that's how I got that. Uh, next thing, let's uh, go ahead and color and get the levels looking more accurate. And so let's come here. I'll add a new effect. We'll go to color correction and go down to curves. And what I notice here is it's a little bit too dark for my liking, uh, just everything. So we'll go ahead and bump the gamma up. I might also want to bump up the gain ever so slightly just to get more kind of highlights and everything on this side. And then we'll just uh, bump down or actually I'll just leave that kind of at the same value over there. So yeah, so here's my curve for that. It is way too saturated as well. So we can go and come up to the color correction, just add a hue and saturation. Uh, this is also where you can maybe mess around with the color if you want, uh, get some real fancy results like that. Uh, but I'm just gonna mess around with the uh, master saturation right there. So that looks much better. I know it's a little dull right now. Again, in our compositing process, we wanna match it to the footage however we want. And then in the uh, color grading process is when we can make it look a little bit more interesting than this. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I think those levels match much uh, better in my opinion. Uh, they're probably not super exact and uh, you know, I can mess around with this for many hours to get it uh, perfect, but uh, I think it's good enough for what we're doing. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. I think uh, the final things uh, we do need to make sure we're doing the correct, uh, you know, 
uh, things up here. So I'm going to put the color correction nodes uh, before the uh, camera lens blur because we do want to do the blur as kind of our final step. And then uh, final, final step is we'll go ahead and add a quick little grain um, node after this. I, I keep calling them nodes. I come from Nuke. Uh, so uh, just an effect there. So we can go to uh, no noise and grain. We'll just go to uh, add grain right there. And uh, I think the intensity is way too much. So we do need to kind of zoom in here. I'll just uh, move this preview section over here. And yeah, so that intensity is way too much. I'm going to do like a 0.1 maybe, something like that, um, to where it's like literally like barely noticeable. I don't want to move my cloth sim though. Yeah, so it's like barely noticeable there. I think that's good enough. Honestly, I am a new compositor, so I don't know the best uh, grain solution inside of After Effects. Uh, but just uh, something real subtle there. So we'll go to final output for our grain. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. We can go ahead and render this out. So I'm going to come to file, export, render queue. We can go ahead and uh, move it to a new file location. Once you have it named and saved wherever you want, let's hit save there. Uh, I'm just going to replace the one I already did. And let's go ahead and render this out. Okay, so here is the final result that we got from this tutorial. Hopefully you guys got something similar or learned a thing or two on the way. Um, I had a lot of fun with this. I think it was a super good practice uh, to get some of your uh, real world interactions correct inside of Blender and After Effects. Uh, I think it looks pretty realistic. Uh, some nitpicks I have is our uh, kind of antenna up here isn't perfect. And so that's maybe where I'd go back and make sure that geometry is a little bit better. Do some uh, fancy compositing tricks to uh, bleed some of that red into the sky up there. Um, and then finally, uh, just the final thing is at the very beginning it is uh, dealing with some clipping and some stuff down here. I didn't want to have to deal with any rotoscoping. And honestly, it looks kind of ugly here anyways. And so I'd much rather start it, uh, you know, on Instagram or something uh, from this point uh, anyway. So uh, again, that's just... Kind of personal preference there. But anyways, uh, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Again, I have uh, both of those course links down below and also my Patreon. I'd uh, greatly appreciate it if you guys consider joining there. But anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.